to the continued introduction at educator.com for standardized tests when it comes to reading. For this lesson, I'm going to be going over for you some short reading questions and how to approach them and how to answer them and how to get the right answer. So the lesson overview is going to go like this. What kinds of passages will you read? And secondly, what types of questions will you be asked? And then what should you look for when you skim? And then we'll go over some exercises together. What kind of passages will you read? Well, there's basically typically four that test makers will choose from. They'll give you all kinds of science ones. And these are typically the hard sciences like physics, chemistry, astronomy. And they tend to not emphasize psychology or sociology or more soft sciences as they're so called. The other subject is called the humanities. I'll go over what the humanities are after I cover social sciences and nar narrative. Social sciences are, of course, history, social studies, maybe a little bit of economics, or possibly something that would look like anthropology. And the narratives are going to be your short stories. So this just leaves this kind of vague category called the humanities. Well, humanities might be something like you're reading a short speech that somebody has given. That's probably about the most common way that you could see it. Or maybe you're getting a very, very specific biographical information on a historical figure. That's kind of social sciences, but that could also be considered humanities. Humanities is kind of broad, and then it covers a lot of subjects. Probably the easiest ones to get are probably the social sciences and the humanities ones. Science and narratives tend to be a little bit more difficult, but I guess it all depends on the kind of reader you are. Now, what type of questions will you be asked when it comes to the multiple choice questions? Well, they kind of fall into several little archetypes. Some questions might be what are called big picture questions. So you read a whole passage and then you're asked, well, what is the author's main point? What is the author's main message? And then you have five different answers to choose from. You might be asked about the author's point of view or the author's rhetorical purpose. So let's say that you've just read a passage all about human rights or something. And the author will the author will have a specific opinion on a human rights issue in the city or the country of Burma. And then you're asked, what is the writer's point of view on this issue? And then you'll give five different answers. Rhetorical purpose is similar to the author's point of view. They'll be giving you a single line or a single sentence and they'll ask, why did the author put this into the essay? Little picture questions will be asking you about the minor details and the major supporting details of a particular passage. Those should probably jump right out at you if you're used to five paragraph essays. Vocab in context questions are where you use the skills from the very beginning of this course to figure out what this word means and how the author is using it. The very last ones are typically the ones where it's testing your critical thinking ability and you got to make an inference. This is kind of where you read everything all at once and you figure out something else about the author or you figure something else about the author and then you have to infer what might come next. So, general tips covered once again. Even on these short passages, concentrate more on skimming than scanning. Most importantly, you must, you must, you must find that topic. Look for those repeated words. Look for those repeated con concepts. Find the keywords that tell you that the topic is coming. Likewise, when you're watching for these keywords, don't forget to highlight major supporting details or minor supporting details or anything that's happening there. The other important thing you have to watch out for is find the author's proposition and his supporting reasons. This is especially important when you're reading a science one or a social, sci or a social sciences one. Remember, a proposition is something that can be true or false. It's a claim that, of judgment that the author is making and he's going to give you some reasons why you should accept it too. 
No, not everything you read is going to have a proposition, but as soon as you see it, make sure you underline it and you understand it.